Ani Bojo, Gigadon and A Dejnikaz, the Dona Sing Donjaba, Ginoja Dorem. I'm coming to you from the Indigenous Tourism Ontario head office on the Ondakamnakonic First Nation in Anishinaabek Territory on Manitoulin Island. I'd like to acknowledge the thousands of people affected by hundreds of years of trauma at day schools, residential schools, and through colonization across the country. Please join me in a moment of silence to honor those who we've lost. Miigwech. On behalf of Indigenous Tourism Ontario and the Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today for the Skoda Program Finalist Pitch Session. Our inspiration for this exciting initiative was the great work of the Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab's SPARK program. For us, a spark made us think of a fire, or Skoda. In Anishinaab Moen, we use the term Bijina, Bijinana. Skoda, which means roughly translates to uh, the fire from within. In my culture, one of the first teachings we receive is that there's no right or wrong way to do things, just different ways. So whether you pronounce fire as skoda or skoda, we will understand you. Just don't say skodan to us because that is something totally different. Let me tell you more about the skoda program. It starts with us inviting Indigenous tourism entrepreneurs, businesses, community groups, and nonprofits to come forward with their new tourism ideas and experiences that authentically represent celebrate and promote Indigenous culture, heritage, language, cuisine, and communities in Ontario. The program is a safe place to share new Indigenous tourism ideas and to share your fire, your passion, and your innovative spirit. Indigenous people are innovative people and Indigenous Tourism Ontario and the Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab partnered to launch the Indigenous Tourism Shkuda program in Ontario to celebrate that innovative spirit within the Indigenous people doing tourism. The program matches selected applicants with a mentor, provides a $5,000 non-repayable contribution, and provides extra ITO and partner support to help take their new tourism ideas to the next level. In addition, we are pleased to announce all five finalists will receive financial resource mentorship from our partners at the TD Bank Group. Miigwech TD. We are excited to hear from each of our finalists on their new Indigenous tourism ideas for Ontario. But first, we would like to recognize our valuable partners and all our friends at FedDev, the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries, TD, CN, and the Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival for all their unbelievable support. We could not do it without you. And at the and last but not least, I would like to say a chimi a, a big thank you to Justin and his amazing team, the quickly growing and unreal ITO team, our amazing panel of outstanding judges, and most importantly, all the businesses who showed bravery by putting themselves out there to participate in this fantastic program. Now, I would like to introduce you to someone who is quick to help all our members, ITO Director of Member Relations, Jasmine the Jet Burgi. My name is Jasmine Burgi and I'm zooming in today from the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and huron wendat As a treaty person, I accept my responsibility to honor all our relations. Thank you everyone for joining us today and thank you Kevin for the very warm welcome and introduction. Um, supporting Indigenous tourism innovation and entrepreneurs is critical uh, to ensure Ontario's tourism industry is able to renew, preserve, rejuvenate from the impacts of the COVID-19 uh, health and economic crisis. That's why in April, ITO and the lab announced the Indigenous Tourism Shkodi program and made a call out across Ontario. As Kevin mentioned, Indigenous entrepreneurs, businesses and organizations were encouraged to submit applications with innovative new ideas for Indigenous tourism offerings and experiences. We're, we were especially interested in um, Indigenous tourism ideas that connect with and demonstrate the core principle ideas, uh, sorry, the core principles of Indigenous tourism, including community, cultural authenticity, leadership, sustainability, partnership, and collaboration. After a review of 11 applications submitted from across the province, our jury selected five applicants to be invited to this pitch session today. 
We have an incredible judge panel made up of Indigenous tourism leaders and partners who will have the difficult task of selecting three winners today. And at 5.30 Eastern time, the judges will deliberate offline and we will welcome Kevin back along with Carrie Ann Shakes and Lenny Brown from ITO for a tourism talk. The winners will then be announced at 6.15 p.m. Eastern time, so stay tuned. Join me in giving a warm welcome to our pitch session judges. At this time, I would like to invite each judge to introduce themselves. Uh, let's begin with Billy Alexander. Bonjour, Anine uh, Sego. My name is Billy Alexander. I am the Indigenous Executive Chef and Culinary Advisor for Caldwell First Nation. And presently, most of my time right now is in the process of building uh, the largest Indigenous restaurant in the world uh, for Caldwell First Nation, known as Three Fires and the first Indigenous winery in Eastern Canada. And uh, I'm honored to be here today. I actually have sat on the other side of this and been a contestant, a finalist and a winner. Um, so I'm super excited and uh, just want everybody to show their personality and thank you for being here. Miigwech. Thank you, Billy. Next up on the floor is Carol. Thanks, Jasmine. I'm Carol Greenwood and I am the Vice President of Membership and Business Development for the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario, commonly referred to as TAIO. We are very proud partners of the Indigenous Tourism Ontario group, as well as some of our fellow judges here, uh, Destination Ontario, and we also are partners with the Tourism Innovation Lab. So it was our pleasure to accept this uh, opportunity to be part of this panel because I've, I've seen other innovative um, ideas throughout my the, the time of working with you, and I just can't wait to hear the pitches today. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Carol. It's a pleasure to have you. Next up is Carolyn. Hi, honey. Carolyn King, coming from Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation in uh, southern Ontario, uh, right adjacent to the town of Hagersville and adjacent to the Six Nations uh, Grand River Territory. And that uh, I um, am self-employed and do a lot of uh, outreach programming for the First Nation. I'm the creator founder of a project called the Moccasin Identifier, which is a lot of marketing and education and awareness where we're looking to educate uh, this elementary, basically the elementary school system about um, the First Nations who lived on the land and their treaty land. So all exciting stuff and uh, definitely great, uh, glad to be part of this and to see uh, people's ideas about what's, what's uh, uh, how they're doing their uh, promotions. Um, so. Glad to be here. Thank you, Carolyn, and welcome. Next up is Kita. Hello, everyone. My name is Kita Macbeth. I'm a senior regional manager for Indigenous banking with TD Bank. Um, I work with all things Indigenous from personal banking, small business banking, commercial banking, wealth, um, large deals and real estate development, uh, community giving, hiring, retention, community donation, <laughs> volunteering. Um, hiring and career progression within TD. Banker by day, uh, my passion, of course, supporting initiatives like this with Indigenous entrepreneurs and businesses, um, and really super excited and honored to be here to, uh, to be a part of this panelist. Myself, I'm Onondaga Clear Sky from Six Nations of the Grand River. However, I always say I'm a West Coast import, having grown up here uh, on the West Coast. I'm calling in today from Sinemo territory on Vancouver Island, um, a long ways away. All I can say is thank you for all of your participation and breathe, uh, speak slowly, and it's gonna be exciting. And can I tell you all that I'm a banker by day, but it's events like these that really excite me and it's passionate. And um, I know you'll all have my contact details afterwards. So if there's any questions, we're here to listen and super excited to hear you all. I can't wait, looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Kita. We're thrilled to have you. And last but not least, Lisa. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Lavecchia. I'm the president and CEO of Destination Ontario. We're the provincial marketing organization that helps promote the province and bring visitors to Ontario to enjoy all kinds of experience, especially Indigenous experience we want to highlight more and more of. Um, so thank you very, very much for the opportunity to be here today. I'm really excited too. I totally hear you, Akita, Carol, Billy, like Carolyn, I'm excited for this. I, I've never done anything like this before. I think it's super amazing. I love what Kita said, breathe, just be yourself. 
Um, I'm really honored to be here and I thank you very much for the opportunity and good luck to everyone. Thank you. Miigwech, Nawe. Marcy, thanks for being with us today, judges. I'll now hand over to Justin LaFontaine to start the pitch session. Best of luck to all the finalists. Over to you, Justin. Thanks so much, Jasmine and, and everybody. Um, hello, I'm Justin LaFontaine. I'm the program lead with the Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab. Thanks again for joining us for the Shkode program finalist pitch session. We always say it's our very friendly take on a tourism dragon's den. So I'm also super excited to hear the pitches and um, we're, we're going to get started very soon. Um, I'll first say that I'm joining you today from the Windsor-Essex region and I respectfully acknowledge that the land on which I stand today is the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa and the Potawatomi peoples. I'm grateful to work, live and live in this area. Very briefly, the Tourism Innovation Lab, we're a nonprofit tourism development incubator that started in 2018 right here in Windsor, Essex. And since then, we've expanded uh, the lab and our SPARC uh, program across the province. And we are thrilled to be partnering with ITO and the other program partners represented here uh, on the Shkode program for Indigenous tourism offerings and experiences in Ontario. Um, so we um, will get started with the pitch session. So we have five finalists and each of them will have three minutes to pitch their new indigenous tourism idea, followed by six minutes for our judge panel questions. After all of our finalists have pitched, the judges will go into a private deliberation room uh, for approximately 45 minutes and then come back at 6.15 p.m. Eastern to announce the three winners. Again, each of those winners will receive $5,000 non-repayable uh, financial contribution, mentorship, ITO, and other partner support. At this time, I'll ask the other finalists um, uh, to leave the Zoom meeting and come back at your specific time slot. And uh, hopefully we still have uh, Mino Gishgud uh, joining us. So you're up first. So if you could um, turn your video on. And again, for the other finalists, if you could leave the Zoom meeting, uh, we'll get started with the first pitch momentarily. All right, I see uh, Mino Gishkud. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. Great. Well, I can uh, hear you loud and clear. Um, again, uh, you have three minutes to do your pitch. And then at the end of that, we'll hand it over to the five judges. Um, again, be confident. You have a great new tourism idea. You were selected as one of our finalists and we're all really excited to learn more. So I'm just gonna set up my timer. And uh, when I do, I'll um, say over to you and then you can start. Are you, um, are you ready for that? I'm ready. Okay, so I will hand it over to you, start. My name is Mino Gishgut, and I'm Anishinaabe from the Piketronong Territory, also known as the Wapawailan First Nation, located within the heart of the Great Lakes. And I'd like to take this moment to share information about a new ecotourism boat tour business called Noel Nunsisung. Guided by cultural values and teachings, Noel Nunsisung endeavors to promote local indigenous language, culture, and history. This new ecotourism business not only brings tourism into the First Nation, but it also bridges an indigenous cultural knowledge gap in education, uh, as well as opportunities for environmentalists and fun for you know, the, the average outdoor enthusiast. Keep in mind, Wapu Island is a biodiversity hotspot. It supports a rich mosaic of natural areas, including some of the most biologically diverse areas in Canada. Did you know Canada has over 70 endangered species that can only be found in Bicetronau? I remember a time when an elder from our community pointed out a flower to me in the marsh. And he says, you see that flower there? Pointed to the flower in the water. Have you seen that plant before? He said, I says, no. There's people that study plant life for a living that don't know this plant is here. You know why it is here? Because we leave it alone, he said. 
Listening to stories connected to indigenous perspectives and worldview provide tourists with an opportunity to see and experience a habitat that was shared by indigenous people for thousands of years. Tourists will also learn how to how these uh, geographical areas have historical significance in Canadian history. The well-known Sasung boat tours are not only a time for relaxation and sightseeing, but a time for indigenous cultural experiences that are second to none aboard a luxurious 25-foot pontoon boat along the shores of the St. Clair waterways in North America's largest freshwater delta. Our target market spans an audience that ranges from adventurer enthusiasts and sightseers to burden adventurers. Tourists looking for a Saturday sunset cruise to a weekend getaway, family charters, educational charters. And in a final note, in 2015, Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission came out with 94 calls to action to bring a road to re uh, reconciliation between Canada and First Nations, Métis and Inuit people. The well known Sisong contributes to the calls to action offering an experience that introduces native and non-native people alike in awareness of local indigenous language and culture in nature's natural outdoor classroom. Miigwechka bezindoyek. Thank you for listening. Good job, thank you so much. Thanks so much for your pitch. I will now ask um, uh, the judges to turn your videos on if you had turned them off. And now we have our judge panel questions. We'll just wait to see. All right, I think we have all of our judges on. So. Um, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll go through an order of judges and then after each uh, finalist, we'll just um, start with the, the next person down the line. So um, judges, are you ready? I'll start with um, Billy, over to you. Yeah, uh, you know, that was a fantastic presentation. Honestly, um, hearing, you, uh, hearing you speak reminded me of, of, of hearing my grandparents speak, my ancestors in the same way, chills through my body speaking about um, what many might seem, uh, their viewpoint might be simple, but is so, so important into our culture. Uh, I guess my question would be for you in, in, in taking on the responsibility of revitalizing uh, education through language culture, do you see this as being the same template offered to everybody, whether you're a hunter or a family, or do you see this differing and uh, in, in different tours within the same, uh, like tailoring it to each individual? No, I think uh, there's components to it that could change, be modified uh, based on uh, what, what people's expectations are. I would have uh, some tours that are the same um, in relation to the geographical area because there's uh, a lot of significance in, in uh, uh, these uh, locations within our territory. But if we have, uh, let's say, uh, educational charters, educational tours, uh, that might be something that would be tailored more towards uh, their curriculum objectives. No, great, great, great answer and great job. Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Great, uh, over to you, Carol. Thank you. Um, I also very much enjoyed your presentation. I, I really appreciated the, the story that you shared about um, leaving the plant alone and how that, that allows us to still see that. And, and that was really a, a very, um, it just sort of, it resonated and really talked about the type of experience you want people to have. And I, and I appreciated that. One of the things um, that you mentioned is that it could be a sunset cruise or it could be a weekend getaway. And I know one of the, the core values for Indigenous tourism is working with partnership. And so I just wanted to know, have you considered if it's somebody's going for a weekend getaway, what are, who are some of the partners you're looking at for accommodation and things like that in the area? Um, unfortunately, uh, hotel accommodations are far and few in between in our area. But uh, one of the things that uh, I was considering for uh, more like a camp style, I guess we have we do have teepees um, mm -hmm. that we're, we're we're looking at. We're exploring how we can utilize that more because we do have the space uh, for for people to have camps. And, and the style of camping would be more towards people that are prepared to rough camp, I guess, per se. Right, yeah. Um, 
in the community, we do have uh, opportunities for members because they have cottages that they rent, uh, that they do bed and uh, breakfast. Um, that's something that uh, we've already kind of started in a way where we brought people in and, uh, and uh, we took them to their places to stay. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate the answer. Which. Okay, great. Uh, Carolyn, over to you. Oh, I think you're still muted, Carolyn. Okay, Ani. Okay, I'm in. Um, so that's great um, that you're doing tourism, making use of uh, Wapowa Island and all its waters and its special place for plants. And that, um, so are you, are you kind of started already? And so what, you know, if you win, what's your, your, uh, it's kind of like, sorry. Um, okay, go ahead. I'm started already in a sense where we had provided tours, but not as a as an official uh, business entity per se. Kind of like uh, we have friends. We have I have teachers that I work with that I've taken out, and it was all accumulation of all these um, uh, little experiences that I had that I thought that there's a lot of missed opportunity here, and and more opportunity that can come if uh, you know we kind of focus on developing packages and building a brand, you know, so that people become familiar with uh, the name and, and, and the expectations of this type of tour within uh, the territory. Okay, great, great. If I was down there, I would look forward to this trip. Thank you. Uh, yeah. give, give us a call. Okay. Miigwech. Absolutely. Kida, over to you. Excellent presentation. Thank you so much for sharing. I don't have a hard time not crying through all this, so I'll just let you all know as I go through this. Um, absolutely amazing. Thank you for sharing kind of where you're at, just getting off the ground. My question would be, what's the total cost? Like, have you actually set, set out a total cost of what you would need bare bones to get off the ground running? Um, and what portion would this 5,000, if you were potentially win, what part would that play um, in where you are with your funding right now for it? So, so I actually already have a boat. Uh, so this uh, pontoon that we have is uh, is really the 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 bulk of what is required for it. And then so we have our we have our maintenance and storage fees that are um, expected to go along with this. Um, and and what I was hoping for in relation to the five thousand, a big portion of that would go into marketing. Uh, because uh, because what I what I noticed right off the hop was a, a mentorship um, opportunity uh, as well that that comes with this and and I'd like to take full advantage of that in, in ensuring that we market our product best way possible and so uh, developing websites and and you know things of that nature is what we're looking forward to. Perfect. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay, great. Our final judge question for you, uh, Lisa, over to you. Hi, thanks so much. You just answered my question. Well done. I was just yeah. about to talk about the marketing, one of my favorite topics. Um, oh, yeah. It sounds like you've got a really good plan there because I was thinking that once you get the business off the ground, just like you were talking with Kita and Carolyn, et cetera, and you got this beautiful pontoon and I'll just say you gave me a chill too when you talked about the flower. I, that's exactly the kind of experience. I think people would want to hear about. So I, I loved that. But marketing, so putting some design and some thought into how you start to communicate with that experience, that tour, depending on your different audiences or like how you were saying to Billy, like, you know, what type of tour and stuff, you're going to need those marketing dollars. So great partnerships with everybody, you know, and being able to kind of do those and you'll need, yeah, some design elements, et cetera. So Thank you for already thinking about that and putting some thought into that because that was going to be my question as to the next step for you so mm. that we can get people to enjoy your tour on that gorgeous yeah. pontoon boat. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. Great job today. Me really, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. Great. Well, uh, thank you all, all the judges and, and think, thank you, Mino uh, Gishkun, for again, uh, bring forward your great new Indigenous tourism idea to the Shkode program and for pitching today. We all very much appreciate it. Uh, so at this point, we're going to um, ask you to uh, leave the Zoom meeting.
And then please do uh, join us back. Um, there's actually two opportunities again that uh, were outlined earlier. At 5.30, there'll be a uh, tourism talk with, ITO, with the ITO team. And then the winner's announcement will be made at 6.15 p.m. today. So um, uh, thank you once again. And uh, if all the judges are uh, on the screen uh, can give um, a round of applause for a great pitch. Thank you so much for sharing your new tourism, Indigenous tourism idea with us. Miigwech. Mabapi. See you soon. All right, so um, our first finalist uh, uh, already, and thanks again to all of the judges. Uh, we have a couple of minutes before our next finalist will be joining us. I was wondering if I could uh, call on Carol to um, uh, share a little bit more information about the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, what, what a great way to, to kick off such a strong candidate right off, right off the get-go. So um, the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario is the advocacy organization on behalf of the all tourism industries, um, any part of the tourism industry within the province. We work very closely with our partners as you know, Lisa's here representing Destination Ontario. Um, they're the marketing organization. I'm not gonna tell you what Lisa does. I'm sure she's gonna do a whole a little promo for herself. So I won't take that away. Um, but we really work on behalf of the operators to uh, and speak to government, um, talking about legislation, regulations, things that are happening right now that actually help you run your business and, and make things go smoothly. And so obviously this past year, it's been a little bit challenging. And so um, we most certainly have been the voice of tourism to the provincial government, working with them on, you know, different programs that have been available, as well as, you know, sort of managing through this process that, that COVID has presented. However, as much as our industry has been really struggling, um, it is scenarios like what we've seen today, that there is still so much innovation within our industry. And it has been wonderful to see our industry really work with collaborations and partnerships and, and really be willing to work shoulder to shoulder because we all want to open again. And so every week we speak with stakeholders and understand what they're doing and represent the, those uh, issues directly to government and come back with solutions. And so um, thank you for letting us be your voice and, and um, we are happy to help anybody in any way. Thank you so much, Carol. Tyra is a great uh, partner of ours as well. So we appreciate all the support. All right, uh, we have our second finalist uh, joining us, I see, Helen Ann. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thanks. I, I can hear you loud and clear, which is great, and we can see you uh, very well. So um, thank you very much again for um, uh, bringing forward your in new Indigenous tourism idea and for um, joining us to pitch today. Uh, as I mentioned, we're a very friendly bunch and we're all very just uh, keen to hear more about um, your idea and uh, your business as well. So um, be confident in that. We, we feel uh, uh, we're really excited to hear more. So just as a reminder, you'll have three minutes to do your pitch and I'll be um, keeping time at approximately 30 seconds before the end of the three minutes. I'll make a note in the chat function so you'll see a little 30 seconds to go. Uh, and then that's a good uh, indication to, to sort of wrap up uh, if you need to. Um, following that, we'll have approximately six minutes for judge questions. So each of the judges will ask you questions. And then after that, oh, um, thank you. And then uh, have you uh, come back to hear the winner's announcement at 6.15 p.m. Eastern time. So with that, as I get my uh, uh, stopwatch set up, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good to go. Excellent. All right, well, with that, I will hand it right over to you. You have three minutes, Helen Ann. Good luck. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Helen Ann Embry, and I live in Mattawa, Ontario. Here I am surrounded by wild green spaces, mighty rivers, and an abundance of wildlife. This is the land of the Algonquin and Métis people. I myself am Métis and Mohawk Turtle Clan, and I have always felt a great responsibility to help others appreciate and conserve the land that we live on and share 
And it is here in Mattawa that I am the owner of Mattawa Eco Farms and Nature Learning Center. On my micro farm, I want to connect people with food and the traditions of Métis people by providing tours to teach about wild medicines and edibles. This is also a place for workshops to bring in the indigenous elders of my community to share their knowledge with families. What makes my business unique is that on my tours, I merge traditional knowledge with modern technologies. I am able to preserve the past of Indigenous people while showing the world how we can lead with the innovative green technologies of today. One of the ways I am able to do this is traditionally I will grow the three sister plants, the corn, the beans, and the squash. And then I show people how to cook these foods using a solar oven instead of a fire so that we can reduce deforestation and our carbon footprint. Also, Indigenous people are long known for our relationship with fishing and aquaculture. And on my farm, we can demonstrate how to grow fish and plants for food using aquaponics, which is a nearly perfect ecosystem. The great thing about these experiences are that they can be enjoyed by people of all ages, as an individual, a family, a class, or a group. The tours can be done in person and virtually if needed. This past May, I was able to provide three virtual workshops and they all sold out, which is a good indicator to me that there is a demand for this type of experience. If I were to be the recipient of this honor, it would help me to purchase TP poles. I just ordered a TP, um, a small dock to make our aquaponics more accessible for our elders and people with disabilities. And I still need to purchase some workshop uh, supplies such as beads, materials, and cloths as needed. So these experiences will help people understand the past while promoting our role for a greener future. The client will experience all of this educational material in a fun, immersive, and multi-generational way. So best of luck with your decision, and I hope to see you all soon on the farm. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, great, thank you so much. Well done. Um, so we'll now uh, open it up to the judge questions. So judges, if you don't have your video on, uh, turn it on. And um, we'll start with Carol. Hi, thanks, Helen Ann. That was a great presentation. And, um, you know, uh, I had a couple of questions written down and you answered them as you were doing the presentation. So now I'm going to ask you a question that I didn't have written down. And that is, I mean, you've really looked at a lot of, you know, you mentioned about whether it's individuals, groups, you've talked about the elderly or, or people with accessibility. If, you know, with the, um, prize should you win um you know you have the mentorship as well and and what do you think that you're going to like what would be your ideal to use the mentorship for where is it that you would really like the guidance i would appreciate growth in all areas i mean i would do take on any mentorship that would provide my business and experience with a more polished overall presentation so whether it's working with someone in marketing or IT or working with um, the tourism groups to help me launch and spread the word of the business, whether it's working with elders, even in my community, um, which I've already reached out to several and they are really excited about the project. So I'm receiving some mentorship from the community elders already, which is amazing. So I am really open to all forms of mentorship because I just love to learn and I really want to make an impact on my community. Great, thank you. Great, thanks, Carol. Uh, next up, Carolyn, over to you. Hi, Anit. That was a great, great. You know, uh, to me, you're you're already existing and doing things, and so you're adding to your uh, your product there. Um, here, uh, uh, we have a uh, interest in the the plants and the use of indigenous plants. Um, uh, so that is, uh, sounds like you're, you're looking to do that. And that, um, I was wondering, are you selling all those? 
um, like, do you have a yes. product? Okay. Okay. So we, we just go to the local farmer's market and we sell our fruits and herbs and things like that. Okay. Okay, good. All right. And uh, you answered the question. I made note about uh, um, seniors or people accessing the site. Uh, I find that um, I'm, I'm an older person, so it looks like it's too far to walk. I make the decision not to go. <laughs> so I look at you're looking to address that. So that's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. Akita. Thank you. Great presentation. I love how I can hear birds, and I'm assuming I can hear birds from where you are, because I'm like, um, I feel like I'm outdoors. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, they're actually indoors, though, because we just um, hatched six chickens. So <laughs> there's little baby chicks right beside me. So <laughs> cute. My dog, my dog noticed straight away there were chickens somewhere, and he was looking around for them. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, that's all good. Great presentation. Um, super excited. I just. Is it a seasonal or is it all year round is one question. Um, like, is this gonna be going through winter um, as well as summer? And in your, like you're going to, to farmer's markets and you're doing that, is there any opportunity for other partnerships as well um, with you know partnering on your education side or bringing in guest um, elders or mentorship or is that on your radar at all? Absolutely it is. Um, so we can, to address your first question, we can operate all year round. Um, for instance, it would just change what that looks like. So the teepee I ordered is a four season teepee with a liner. And then our greenhouse, we actually have a small greenhouse. It's a geodesic dome. And we also have a cold frame box outside. So one thing I did this past spring is I actually became a educator with National Geographic and I ran a program for them about cold climate uh, gardening in the north, in northern Ontario, and it was hugely successful. So that is one thing that I can do to make it a four season operation. And then yes, so the second part of your question in terms of the educational component, yeah, I've already been working with elders in my community and they are really excited to share their experiences and their knowledge and they have so much and they haven't been able to go into schools. So providing them with this outdoor space hopefully brings them more opportunity as well. Perfect, thank you so much. Thanks, Kita. Thank you. Uh, Lisa. Great presentation today. Thank you so much for, you did a great job. You answered so many of the questions up front that I would have had too, um, given that you described where you are and how you've already been kind of, what you'd be looking for in terms of with the money that you um, could potentially win. My question was, I think you talked a little bit about some people when they come to the farm and uh, a tour, I think you mentioned, correct? Yeah, it's a tour. So yeah. So um, right now that's what I'm doing, but right. then I want to add this in, this indigenous component Bonnet. because I have knowledge to share our elders. Yeah. So that's kind of, I'm adding on. Oh, you're adding on. So when you, that's awesome. And yeah. I think, but how did you get the word out about the tours to begin with as you add on? I was just because uh, from a marketing perspective, you already have people coming, so you're adding on. So that's great. Do you see a vision for yourself in terms of, you know, how you would get the word out even further? So I have partnered up with 101 Experiences, which is a Northern Ontario oh. uh, tour initiative, and they're the ones who actually told me about this program. Yeah. So that's how I came here is because I, I heard about them. And they are really interested in breaking down um, discrimination and barriers for tourism experiences. And I, I jumped on board. I'm like, I'm, I'm in full agreement. This is a wonderful idea. And this is how I can envision seeing myself adding to that. So that's one way, but also through social media through social. and um, newspaper advertising at this point. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Our final judge question, over to you, Billy. Justin, 
Hi, Helen Ann. Uh, great, Hi. fantastic presentation. Um, I had a couple little questions for you that all kind of roll into one. So we mentioned the tours uh, with it. Oh, by the way, kudos to cooking with solar power. I have done that. I do do it. I'm experimenting with it all the time and it is amazing once it's pulled off right. Um, a uh, couple things in relations to your tours. So uh, right now your cost per tour, how long they are and if there's a full meal or snacks included in it. And the second uh, part of the question is, so your heritage Métis, also Turtle Clan Mohawk and your consulting elders, are you seeing the indigenous lens being one personally from you or combination of that and the community altogether? All right, so um, to answer that question, it's because I am a registered citizen with the Métis Nation of Ontario, and I also currently do work for the Métis Nation of Ontario, I do have more access to a lot of Métis material. Even though I am from Six Nations, um, Mohawk Turtle Clan, I moved up here three years ago because we wanted to do something like this and grow food. And, and I wanted to connect with my Métis culture as well because that was always missing from my childhood. But it's unique because this is also historically the lands of the Algonquin people as well. So the Algonquin people here currently have an outlet um, in which to provide their workshops, but the Métis people do not. So bloodline wise, the Algonquins and the Métis, like they do mix quite a bit. So it's hard to tell where one culture really ends here and where like another would begin. So I'm open to learning from anyone in my community and promoting my community, whether they are Algonquin, Métis, or um, one-offs like me. Um, and your first question was in regards to, could you repeat uh, that? Yeah, co cost, uh, cost, cost per tour and how long each tour is. So there's actually no cost to us to run the tours other than our time. So in terms of like an admission price, um, we wanted to keep the tours private and small. Um, it helps us to focus on what that person or what that group wants to learn. So we're able to customize it a bit more. So we're keeping tours to under 10 out of respect for, of course, uh, of course the COVID restrictions and safety, but also to private, like make it a more custom. And the cost we're currently looking at is $25 per adult and $10 per child ages four to 18 and then four or sorry, three and under is free. Nice. And then look at doing like, we've had interest from the cadets and the boy scouts and from schools locally who want to come out once all the restrictions lift. So then we would do group, group discounts as well. Amazing. No, those are great answers. And, and my question in regards to the lens with it is, yeah, there's so many different unique stories in all those cultures that I think you have unlimited potential for, for, for telling different versions. So great job. Thank you. Great. Well, thank, thanks, judges. And uh, thank you very much, Helen Ann. Great job. A round of applause. Oh, and, um, thank you, really everyone. Appreciate, we appreciate your pitch. And uh, just a reminder uh, that we'll ask you to leave the Zoom meeting uh, now, but do please come back at 6.15 for the judge announcement for the winners. And uh, at the same time, there's also a 5.30 tourism talk by uh, the ITO team. So please join them. But once again, thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and good luck. It was nice to meet you all. Thank you. All right, I see our next um, finalists up, Amanda, Cora, and Brad Robinson. How are you? We're great. Very good, thank you. <laughs> You're in a really um, beautiful ready to go. place. Are you ready? <laughs> I think so. We should get That's our right. um, bathing suits on. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, bathing, no, not bathing suits, but PFDs for sure. Okay, sorry, right, yes. Um, well, great, well, thank you so much. Um, Amanda and Brad for joining us today and again for bringing forward your new Indigenous tourism idea uh, and uh, coming to pitch. We really appreciate it and we really look forward to hearing more. So just as a reminder, you have three minutes to do your pitch and uh, I'll be timing that. And then after that, we'll hand it over to the judges for the judge questions. Uh, they'll have approximately six minutes to ask follow-up questions. And then after that, 
uh, we'll be um, uh, having you come back at 6.15 for the winner's announcement. So uh, before I hand it over to you, I'm just getting my uh, timer set up. Uh, do you guys have any questions uh, before you start? No, no, actually we don't. We're good. Okay, great. And I think I see all the judges there. Are you guys all ready for the third pitch? Good. Perfect. All right. Well, um, with that, I will hand it right over to you, Amanda and Brad. It's all Great. yours. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. So I'm Amanda Cora from Thrive Tours. We're coming to you from Sault Ste. Marie. I have roots with the Abenaki peoples of Quebec, and this is my partner, Brad. Ani, je suis name qui nation digicos, Oneida Nation of the Thames, don't you um, my uh, spirit name is Green Thunderbird, and I'm from Oneida Nation of the Thames, just outside of London, Ontario. I would like to uh, say, uh, give a, 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 a great thanks for, for uh, the area that we're in, and we're actually in the, uh, an area which is uh, Robertson here on Treaty uh, area, and it's the area of, of the Anishinaabe people. Um, we're actually in um, by a river called Bauting, okay, it has always been referred to that, which means the jumping waters. So um, it's currently... Uh, being named uh, St. Mary's River, and we're actually in the heart of Turtle Island. So you know Turtle Island, we're actually in the heart of Turtle Island, which gives us great pleasure to be in. So we're super excited as Thrive Tours to be here. Um, we are certified interpretive eco-cultural guides. So we're offering outdoor adventures, doing canoeing and kayaking. We have hiking, camping, um, outdoor experiences all year round. Um, we're really striving to do zero footprint experiences for all skill levels and also bring our experiences uh, to make it more accessible to the First Nations in the area as well as youth. Um, it's really important with mental health and bringing our culture back out and, uh, and sharing the real history of this area. Um, we're asking for uh, the money that we're going to be, well, hopefully we're going to be receiving. Um, we will be putting towards um, kayaks. We realize that there's a tremendous amount of youth and a tremendous amount of community that really is behind us, but we unfortunately don't have enough watercraft to actually suit or, uh, or actually bring them all, all out. So we're working with the Indian Friendship Center here, and uh, there's some, a lot of potential of us doing things, but obviously we need, uh, we need some support uh, to be able to financially uh, you know, uh, purchase those things. So uh, three kayaks, they're sit on kayaks, so they actually pedal them. So they're really open to, uh, to any skill level, which is great. Um, and, uh, and obviously all the PFDs and all the safety equipment are gonna go with it. That's right. So um, we're actually have some things coming up, which is some land-based programming. This is a really great opportunity for the community and the indigenous use of, of the area, indigenous and non-indigenous mm -hmm. youth. Um, we'll be teaching basic skills like fire making, uh, bush crafting, uh, all sorts of things that they'll be able to actually get these skills to feel confident to be um, uh, outdoors. And I just see it really being a, a good mental health mm -hmm. uh, boost for, for people Definitely of our area. COVID. Definitely. So I see we have 30 seconds. Yeah. Thank you very much. I want to I... say also that I'm a singer too. So I'll oh, be probably yes. providing a bit of songs on the, uh, on the, the rivers and the lake system. So we can't wait to show people the culture and the heritage we bring to the area. Miigwech. Naha, miigwech. Awesome. Well done. Right on time too. Perfect. Oh. And I do think we'll have to have a song at some point later and definitely we'll absolutely i'll pull out places. whatever yeah i got i got a lot of actually uh, our group the black bull moose singers uh just got asked uh well we just uh opened the uh, junos of this year which is really cool so the honor song was was given to us so uh, i did some because i do video production so we did a film our video of us uh, singing in uh, a ticket mixing actually just outside sudbury and then that went on to a national uh group so that was a lot of fun and uh yeah so i can't wait to get on the water and and, and sing a few songs Sounds awesome. Share some videos. Um, okay, great. Well, uh, I will uh, hand it over to the judges. I'm sure they have lots of questions. We'll start with Carolyn. And uh, just unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Always the mute. Always the mute. Yeah. That uh, Ani, uh, the Ani. Only, uh, that um, the, um, I like the old idea about the water. Uh, it's not my forte. And it, uh, I've only been in the kayak a couple times and tipped over, so lessons uh, needed. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so the whole bit about going back to the water and using your uh, canoes and expanding your uh, kayak. So, um, you, what I see is that that's uh, the kids love it. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's a, a really yeah. big thing for kids. And that uh, so I put my grandkids in canoeing, so they uh, 
but they couldn't get me in the water. That was one thing. <laughs> but at uh, any rate, uh, it sounds all good. And that um, the um, you, you talked about bush making. That was interesting. Oh, yeah. Bushcraft. Yeah. So yeah. Um, a lot of these skills, um, a lot of people don't have these uh, just necessary skills, fire building, um, you know, how to utilize the, the area, how to do it in a in a eco friendly way. I think it's really important for us to as as uh, stewards of the land to really uh, talk about um, how to respect the land and how to utilize it without uh, and, and really kind of uh, take away some of the fear that might be involved in, in that. So really to mm -hmm. all age types and all capabilities, it's really important for us to get people out there uh, because like Amanda was saying, you know, mental health is that unfortunately, you know, has, has, has risen uh, issues has risen. And obviously with, um, with the uh, you know, with, with uh, the residential school system uh, now kind of coming to light, I think a lot of people do need that type of healing. Great. Great. That sounds good. It sounds like you're active already going and got a business running and just want to expand so Absolutely. that's all that all sounds very good mm. and uh, appreciate your enthusiasm <laughs> we have enough of it <laughs> we'd like to spread it <laughs> awesome Thank great you. well Thank you. carolyn uh over to you kita Love you guys' presentation. I, I'm oh, going to try and get through this because I'm probably going to break down and cry because this is awesome. Love what you guys are oh, doing. Oh, thank you. Passions, thank personal you. passion. So I totally know where you're coming from. Um, outside of my bank and volunteering, I self-fund exactly what you're doing um, with Indigenous kids in government care. No way. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand the costs behind it, but also the rewarding of the kids and just all that goes along with it. Oh, the yeah. only thing that I'd ask... Um, Obviously, you've got the dollars, you've got the numbers, you know where this is going. That's great. You have that game plan. Much like myself, I'm in a territory that's not mine. I'm in yeah. a territory, I'm from Six Nations of Grand River, but a West Coast import. Right. I have the challenges of dealing with politics, of mm. dealing with um, friendship centers that only service their nations, their member kids. So yep. that's why I step in privately to offer to the member kids who are from Alberta, from Ontario, from our province um, to provide those services. But at the same time, what I didn't do when I first started volunteering was I didn't go to the community elders here and explain who I am and what yeah. I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, because I just assumed, you know, those organizations doing their thing, I'm just going to go do my own. Mm -hmm. So with that background, um, how have you incorporated that or how will you build in that model of working with your friendship center and yeah. working with yeah. inclusive, you mentioned non-Indigenous kids as well. Mm -hmm. what's kind of your game plan behind that absolutely thank you very much for the uh the question i might as well answer that question i'm actually um i'm the job that i left in order to do this full time was uh was actually working at a friendship center in sudbury it's called Neswakamak native friendship center and i was actually the uh cultural resource coordinator there um i had actually made a lot of really awesome contacts while i was there um my job was to really uh, organize um uh, programming and, and such for the community. And it was not just Indigenous, it was Indigenous and non-Indigenous and really to, 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 to draw those connections between and be kind of a bridge walker in, in, in some way. So I have, um, uh, and we're actually getting to know some amazing people. I, I do know some people from, from Sudbury who ended up moving back to Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, we were just in a pipe ceremony. We, we're always, you know, doing things to, to you know, to obviously spiritual uh, practices and, and uh, and, uh, and ceremony is a very uh, big part of what we do. And considering actually, we literally just moved down the street from uh, Agoman University, which is the, which is Shingwak uh, Residential School. That was the old, so like it's just doors down from our, so, it, so it's visceral, it's, it's, it's real to us. And it's really important for us to acknowledge all of the things uh, that we need to acknowledge and, to, move, and to, to, to work on moving forward, regardless of what organization we, we, uh, we get to, uh, to, to enjoy. And we have been in contact with the chiefs of the area and sat down with them and introduced ourselves. And like you're saying, we just did a pipe ceremony with Chief Sarah yep. of Batuana um, and just kind of continuing uh, building relationships, which is super important, mm -hmm. uh, and including all of the territories and, and First Nations in this area because we are, like you said, we're coming in. So we are doing our best to like tread lightly and get to know the story here mm -hmm. and share the proper story uh from the peoples of this area yeah awesome thank you so much now miigwech kita kita lisa over to you 
Well, I just wanted to say your passion and enthusiasm is infectious. I love it. Well, I'm glad that came. You can me. feel it. You can oh, feel it. It's awesome. It's like it's so, burbling out of us. We can't. You, uh, it. Actually, we just went me. on a tour. Thank you. Uh, we just I went on a it. tour and, and we we had the people just like uh, I was saying, actually, I sang a song out in, uh, in Lake Superior. And they uh, they were just like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. But it's just like it's so natural for me because I'm, I'm kind of used to just p- having this passion flow through. It's, so you, I, I, appreciate I feel it, that. like especially with your name too, like Thrive Tours, like I, oh, yeah. your passion. And these are, like I said, it's totally infectious. So I can't help but notice because I'm drawn to design and things and things like that you're wearing great caps. And oh, it's, like it's your, yeah, it's them. your low, you design them. So I, my I'm question, a, I'm a, I do video production and design too. So I, I actually designed it for Amanda initially. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then, so it's got a, uh, so let me just take it off. So it's got a feather on the top and the leaf yes. on the bottom. And it's got I a one that. underneath the Thrive Tours. I don't uh, know if you can see that. Okay. So it, that, that was my question to talk honest. to you about the design. That's Absolutely. amazing. And yeah. so that incorporates a lot of what you want people exactly. to experience in that tour, right? That's right. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you. You answered my question. I was very curious. I thought it looked great that you were, you had yeah, it all kind I of love, organized. I love explaining it because it, it really, to me as a designer, I want to make the, the most impression on the, li- the least amount of work. And sure. this is essentially Thrive. Actually, the reason why, why we came up with Thrive was, um, well, as, as a woman, Amanda obviously, you know, has, uh, has thrived through a lot of different things in her life. And, uh, yeah. and without going into the backstory, she's actually, I turned out to be an amazing person um, throughout the, everything. So, and also oh, okay. as indigenous people, we have to, uh, we uh, ourselves thrive and, and myself, I'm not going to go into my history, but I think that I've also thrived and, and hearing uh, about all the things that have happened and, and, uh, and these realizations, quote unquote, that the, uh, that the community is having, I think that it's really important for people to understand that as indigenous people, we have all the means and all the rights to, to thrive through this society because uh, given the two world wampum in this, this agreement of, of, of going uh, you know, alongside each other and not intersecting, we are looking to do the same sort of thing in this area and beyond. So we, uh, we wanna use it as a template potentially to, to uh, bring it to other communities because we're only, uh, we can only do so much, but we're looking at doing many, many other things. Oh, thank you so much. I, I love how you talked about your name. I love what you had to say about Amanda. So thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. And um, two more judges to go, just so you know, um, we'll have time for two quick questions. Over to you, Billy. Yes, uh, Ani, Amanda, and Brad, you guys are fantastic. Um, your energy is second to none, and and uh, and it's it, it is truly infectious. You talk about all year round, zero footprint, outdoor adventures, mental health, land based skills. It's all incredible. And with that type of energy, anybody who goes through one of your tours is hoping that they have half the amount of energy that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess my question for you really quickly would be uh, all year round, is it different packages and do you have the chance to, for repeat guests, somebody come oh, back I'm and get a different so experience? I'm glad you asked that. Can I just say one thing really quick? We've already got repeat guests in the first week. Already. So they come over to do a kayak rental. They just loved how we like seen them off and brought them back in and we laid, you know, put our sema in the water and they're just like, okay, well, what else can we do? So uh, we just got a tour booked for a pictograph kayaking camping tour for next week with the same people that came earlier in the week which is so exciting and then winter take it away oh my god okay so winter <laughs> we okay so i have a big vision um because of the zero imprint uh we are looking at doing something that's very unique to anywhere in ontario we're looking to electrify the outdoors now uh we're actually talking with a company called taiga motors and they actually have electric snowmobiles if you can imagine and they're actually out of Quebec, uh, just outside of Montreal. And uh, these electric snowmobiles can go 140 kilometers on one charge, zero footprint, very, very little noise. In fact, uh, you hardly hear them. It's like Tesla of the snow. So we're looking to potentially bring that to the area. Obviously, that's going to require some, some capital uh, to do. But, we're, uh, but you can plug them overnight and have another 140 kilometers in the next day. It's unbelievable. So they also, they also produce um, uh, watercraft as well. So they, they have what's called an orca, which is like a kind of like a personal watercraft. And they also run on electricity. Again, the Tesla of the waters. So eventually we'd like to show, uh, bring this to a First Nations community to potentially 
uh, give them uh, an understanding because I actually drove up to Ottawa, Piscat, and I, it's ridiculous what the gas prices are. So if, if because solar is coming down and because it's renewable energy is going up and the, and the need for, for, you know, the need to, to, to revision how we do it as Indigenous peoples, we've always been the first and foremost to, to take technology to the next level. And that might need, uh, mean uh, kind of going a little bit out of our, our comfort level, but it, it's good because it's, it's actually helping the environments because all of this gas and pollution that would be going to our waters and uh, Bawating or wherever else, we want to be the ones to help eliminate all of that. Well, thank, Amazing. thank you thank so you much, Brad. Right. Thank, thank oh. you, Billy. Um, we're it. just, uh, we, we had our uh, next finalist joining us, but I think she's just left for a moment. Um, I'll just hand it over to Carol for a 20 second opportunity to, to say any comments. Well, Brad and Amanda, one of the things I know about you uh, as being a, one of our newest members of TIO is that you have obviously, you know, I've seen you work and collaborate and try to talk to other people. So I know that's, that's something that's a strength of yours. I don't have any questions. Any questions I was asking were being asked along. I just, I think you, you know, there's not a doubt in my mind that there will be electric, you know, the Tesla of the snow and Tesla of the water. I can't wait. Doors. No question. So Absolutely. congratulations. It was a great presentation. Thank now, you for having us. Carol. Thank you. So thanks um, to all of our judges. And of course, most importantly, thank you, Amanda and Brad. Great presentation, great pitch. So we'll ask you, you at this time. We'll ask you at this time to uh, leave the Zoom meeting and then please do join us again at 615 for the winner's announcement. Now, Bama P, everyone. Bama P. Bama P. And a round of applause. Yes, exactly. Um, so we have our next finalist already at uh, Tammy. Welcome, Tammy. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing? Great, thanks. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Perfect. You're loud and clear as well. So thank you so much. Uh, sorry, we're just a minute or so over uh, with the previous finalists, but we, uh, of course, really appreciate you being here. We appreciate you coming forward with your new Indigenous tourism idea and for pitching today. So um, just as a reminder, you'll have three minutes to do your pitch. And I have my stopwatch. So at about 30 seconds before the end of the three minutes, I'll write a little note in the chat. So you'll see um, you know, that it's uh, time to uh, wrap up. And then after that, we'll have approximately six minutes uh, for judge questions. So they'll all have a chance to ask you a question. Uh, before we get started, and as I get my stopwatch going, um, do you have any questions, um, Tammy? No, I'm ready to rock and roll. Nice, awesome. Okay, well, judges, are you guys all ready? I think I see that. Okay, so um, with that, I'll start my uh, the three minutes right now. Over to you, Tammy. Ani, I am Chef Tammy Mackey, an Anishinaabe Kwe from White Bear First Nation in Saskatchewan and a proudly resilient product of the 60s scoop. I was raised in a wonderful Finnish family where I learned the art of baking from my mother and the spirit and determination of entrepreneurship from my father. My career path has been extremely varied and allowed me to choose relevant work experience. I am a Red Seal journeyman pastry shop baker and I absolutely love what I do. This leads directly into my business, Raven Rising Global Indigenous Chocolates and Pastries. My business has been up and running since last October and is doing well, but I would like to develop and implement online tasting events, both at the corporate level and for individual consumers. Not everyone can travel, Affordability, mobility, and even just time constraints are factors, but an online event is easy to attend. And attending an event that you can see, taste, and even smell makes it that much more personal. Each participant will receive a box of chocolates, tasting notes, and will tune in to participate in the event itself. I've previously done a large event with a and uh, with over 200 participants via Zoom. We had a tasting and musical interludes. Uh, my thoughts are incorporation of uh, traditional dancers um, and or um, Indigenous musicians uh, during the interludes. Uh, my audience is unlimited and distance is not a factor. Cross-promotion of other Indigenous 
businesses, promotion of other indigenous tourism events, products, and yes, ingredients, this is the perfect vehicle for that. I would love to include single servings or sample packs of the ingredients I used in the chocolates, coffees, teas, jams, jellies. This would allow the customer to continue their sensory visit. Of course, in-person events is in the forecast. This would facilitate even more cross-promotion as you can broadcast from some other Indigenous tourism places, go on a virtual tour during the event itself. The possibilities really are infinite. I am uniquely placed in the market and do all of this with the utmost respect for the ingredients I utilize and for the people that I have sourced from to be able to share the stories and to educate not only the consumers, but myself is something that is extremely important to me. I lost that side of me, but this journey and sharing of knowledge is my reclamation. Chi miigwech for allowing me the opportunity to participate. Great. Well done. Thank you so much, Tammy. Great pitch. So. Um, uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to the judges and we'll start off this round with Kida. Thank you so much for your presentation, Tony. Um, I'm going to steal your tagline. I'm proudly resilient product in the 60s scoop. You hit me in the gut right there. <laughs> You're getting composure. Glad I watched your video and had a bit of background because I had to like regain myself. <laughs> um, and then all the, the chocolates and all the eating and the tasting, and I realized what it was like to be in an office uh, situation with, with things like this. And, and it was like, oh yeah, what that must be like. So super excited with the idea, totally innovative. And um, I'm aware that there's a strong need for it, especially from our organization, as you know, 90,000 uh, colleagues across uh, Canada, US and other continents. I guess my question would be, this size of scope, are you looking to keep, like, I know you want to keep it just on Ontario, and that's what we're focusing on right now, um, for your scope, and since Ontario, congratulations on brand new entrepreneur, like, that's absolutely amazing, scary times, but exciting times at the same time. Um, in the size of your, your scope of your market, of your area where you're going, have you already started compiling your lists um, and your marketing, reaching out to them, and knowing, like, your, your max capacity? versus your smallest parties where you can still um, manage a profit and at the same time like the max where you'll be um, spreading yourself too thin. So do you know the kind of range that you're working for within your region? Uh, as far as range goes right now, um, I've already done 200 people and that was a cross Canada event. Um, so I'm pretty much uh, able to accommodate, uh, you know, I think anything over 250 would probably be a bit of a reach. Um, I am working by myself right now. Uh, so until I get some more help, uh, you know, I still have uh, other business commitments that I have to ensure that I'm able to, to meet first, right? Wow. Um, but, you know, Ontario is reopening. Um, it's definitely uh, good to focus uh, here first. And then, you know, it's like uh, that old Pantene commercial and, you know, one will start and then it's a pair and then it's, you know, it, it's exponential, right? So my hope is to um, start a little bit small. You work out all the kinks along the way. Um, and I'm sure there will be. Um, and, and just to keep going. Um, yeah, I'm in Ontario. So that's, you know, definitely where my focus is right now. Um, but, you know, my business is uh, global indigenous and, uh, and that's what I want to, uh, you know, perpetuate is that global indigenous identity. Awesome, thank you so much. Great, thanks, uh, over to you, Lisa. Way to go, Tammy. I thought your pitch was awesome. The chocolates, can you hold them up again? They look delicious. <laughs> I love, yeah, they look great. Um, I just was curious. I mean, I during the pandemic, I'm sure many of us have, I, I definitely participated um, in different kind of virtual activities and I, I did a tasting and I got so much out of it. What I was curious about is when I heard about your 200 person event, which is amazing, by the way, congratulations. That's Thank super you. cool. 
what, how did it go? What went great? What did you learn? What would you want to improve on? It went amazing. Um, I'm kind of a stickler for how things, you know, they have to be a certain way. Yeah. Uh, and it, it allowed me to be that way during the tasting, but then we totally changed up uh, everything for the musical interludes. And at the end, he said, you know, how about if we all do like an interactive group sing-along? And, and I, I went, I'm so not that person, but you know what, that sounds really fun. And we did Sweet Caroline and oh, oh my God. Sense. I was just, I was horrendously singing along and just laughing my my butt off. And it was just, I got such an overwhelmingly positive response. Um, and a and specifically chose four Indigenous ingredients uh, for me to incorporate um, into the chocolate. So it was a very, uh, you know, very kind of scary, but it was so much fun in the end and uh, yeah, a lot of work, but, but very much worth it. Um, what would I change? Um, I would definitely have, you know, more indigenous content in. Uh, that's the whole idea of doing this myself. Um, instead of having somebody facilitate it, I want to facilitate it myself so that, you know, there's all of that cross promotion. Um, which is so very important, I think, uh, uh, you know, I've said, we're, there's so many of us, but we're so pocketed in, in individual regions, um, to really put a hand out and say, you know, like, Ani, I'm Anishinaabe too, and, you know, let's do some collaboration, together, yeah. let's work together, come on, you know, yeah. um, it's, I think it's, it's the ultimate, um, the goal of, of everyone, right, is, is to raise awareness and uh, educate. Definitely. Great. Thanks so much for your answer. That was terrific. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Over to Billy. Hi, Tammy. Um, Hi. <laughs> I, I want to say, I, great, great, great job. Um, I think you have unlimited potential here because I think you're changing chocolate. I, I, I think that the chocolate is a, a relatively like perceived as fairly simple in terms of ingredients and you're changing that from a, from a lens. I think it's absolutely untouched and I think you have a, an ability to bring a care factor to those ingredients that isn't uh, viewed. Plus everybody wants chocolate in their house. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yours is the only one that I actually ever felt guilty about eating and then not guilty after eating it. Um, <laughs> So, so I, I, my question would be, if you were chosen for the 5,000, um, where do you see the 5,000 going to use? And, and is there any mentorship that you see being valuable to you? Um, so I do need a bit of an upgrade of a laptop. Um, so I need something that's a little more reliable. This one tends to cut out when it feels like it. It's getting kind of in the weeds. Um, I'd like you know, some decent backgrounds, um, obviously a little bit better uh, sound, uh, maybe faster internet, although I'm on fiber, I don't know how much faster I can get. Um, and definite marketing help, um, which is also something that, uh, you know, I like to think I'm good at everything, but I'm not. Uh, I'm good at chocolates and pastries, and I'm good at being, you know, a little sarcastic and stuff like that. I'm not the best at marketing and I really would like somebody to uh, point me in the right direction to, you know, how to make those really uh, big corporate kind of connections. Um, it's difficult to get in the door with them and which markets, uh, how to market uh, to individuals so that it's, it doesn't seem so, out of reach or, um, you know, I don't want to be too hoity-toity, you know, <laughs> I want to be very, um, just a regular kind of person that's just going to introduce them to, to something new. Um, you know, so anybody that signs up, I'm sure is, is already in that, uh, that mindset, but, uh, but yeah, definite marketing, uh, strategies and, and mentorship is, is what I'm looking for. And frankly, anything that can help, 
uh, the business, um, collaborate with other businesses, um, you know, that there's always gaps that need to be bridged, right? Um, and because I've not grown up in the culture, um, I'm, uh, my brother says we're very much like apples and we're red on the outside and very white on the inside. And I tend to agree. So I don't want to do anything that would, um, you know, show any disrespect for anything. Uh, it, it's very important to me. So, you know, maybe some, some cultural help along the way as well. I'm, I'm learning as well here too, right? So. No, we, we all are. Those, those are great answers. Thank you. Great. Great. Thanks so much. Um, we do uh, have very limited time left, so sorry about the, that, but we'll uh, give both the last two judges uh, a quick chance to give a, a quick comment or question. So 30 seconds each. Carol, you, you, over to you. Thanks, Justin. Um, being uh, Having the Red Seal um, as a pastry chef, I understand your attention to detail, not only in your business, but also in everything you do, and that's not surprising why you're successful. Um, with um, one of the core um, values with Indigenous tourism, one of the things that they talk about is about community and representing the community. And with you having a, a strong focus on running this business virtually, um, how are you going to implement the community element when you're doing this on a virtual platform? Well, even though it's virtual, every, everything that I'm offering is tangible, mm -hmm. right? So the, the taste of, of, you know, the ingredients, the, the smell, the, the look, um, the interaction that that you and I are having yeah. uh, is as important as being out in the wilderness or on a boat somewhere. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in person. Um, and I think that that COVID has has shown us really uh, how important interaction is on any level. For a lot of people, this mm -hmm. is the interaction that they get. Um, you know, a lot of people just are not able to attend certain things. So um, I think addressing the, the gaps that are there, uh, yeah. that's what this does. Great, Great thank thanks. you for that answer. Uh, Steve Simpson, now hold on tight. We're getting to you shortly, but our last judge, uh, real quick, Carolyn, over to you. No, she's un right. unmute. Uh, Ani, uh, that was great. Uh, I'm interested in the ingredients in these chocolates. What <laughs> makes them different? What makes them unique? Maybe that's too long, big of a question, but anyway, <laughs> I, I, well, I'm, it, I'm like it's, interested. It's okay. It's okay. It's it is a big question and it's a big answer. Uh, they're they're unique. Um, but they're not. They are the original ingredients, the ingredients that were here from time immemorial. Uh, you know, like it's the the things that we take for granted that we see every day, uh, catkins, uh, you know, things that First Nations people have made tea out of, uh, you know, mints and sweetgrass and there's just so much out there. When I walk outside now, I just see chocolates hanging from trees and chocolates <laughs> waving in the wind from the grass because I know everything has a flavor and a, a taste. And, you know, there's hopefully flavors that I can introduce that we don't even know existed yet, uh, but that were there and available. So, Unique, I think so, uh, probably in the incorporation as well, uh, you know, of, of, of what I do and, and how I do it kind of thing. But, uh, but yeah. Sounds fantastic. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, well, thanks so much. Thanks judges. Thank you so much, Tammy. Great job. Again, we really appreciate you bringing forward. Yeah, round of applause. Big witch. Well done. Uh, please do come back at 6.15. The judges will have their winner's announcement. And again, thank you so much. Um, thank you. See you soon.
All right, so um, Steve Simpson Jr., uh, you can hear me if you can turn your video on now. Hi, Steve. You can unmute yourself too. There you go. Hi, Justin. Sorry for the delay. We're just a few minutes uh, behind schedule, but yeah. thank you so much. We really appreciate you, um, again, bringing forward your new Indigenous tourism idea and for being with us to pitch it to our judge panel today. We're all really excited to hear more. Um, so uh, just a reminder, you'll have three minutes to do your pitch, which I'll time. And then after that, there's the judge question. So each of the five judges will uh, have a chance, uh, approximately six minutes to ask questions. And then after that, um, you're the last uh, finalist out of the five. So we'll be um, facing a very difficult uh, challenge to um, uh, select the winners for the program. So um, with that, do you have any questions um, before I hand it over to you, Steve? No, I don't have questions. Okay, good. And I can hear you clearly and, um, and see you very well. So judges, <laughs> are you ready? Our final finalist already. How did that happen? Our fifth finalist. So with that, uh, over to you, Steve. Hi, my name is Steve Simpson Jr. And I'm a Cod Codwell First Nation member. Our first family business, Simpers Fishing Charters and Guided Hunts is the only indigenous owned an operated chartering business located in Windsor, Essex on a traditional territory of Codwell First Nation. We guide visitors in small, intimate groups, sharing stories and community while demonstrating hunting and fishing techniques and traditional knowledge that we have gained through life experience as Codwell people. Using creature sacred law, using creators, sacred law of land stewardship and the seven generations principle, our ideas to expand from our seasonal business to year round operations by offering hands on fishing and hunting experiences. Some examples include tanning fish skins, ice fishing with cultural stories around the fire, cooking classes with Chef Billy Alexander and proper offering of tobacco as a culturally significant way to honor the spirit of the animal that gave its life. This idea was while based in traditional knowledge using unique in that it helps us build our business in a more year round capacity and support cultural rejuvenation outside of the summer months. Most indigenous owned tourism business operate. We are also looking to build a digital asset collection and utilize online booking technology. We are in the early stages of the planning process. We have recently re redeveloped our website for online booking and to expand our business further and have more working with a business advisor through ITO's IBA program, who has been supporting us in experience development the Codwell First Nation has an experienced development team that has offered to provide support. A market analysis is also available through ITO as well as through CFN's Economical Development Department. The target market for these experiences are cultural explorers and authentic experiences, very much aligned with nearby attractions such as Point Pelee National Park. We welcome support to bring this from idea to execution and some businesses planning to determine our costs and revenues, as well as some support marketing the experiences. We hope that this idea is a start for cultural revitalization that it supports sharing with Codwell First Nations culture after so many years of displacement. We hope that it encourages community pride and helps to bring our people back home. Thank you. Great, well done. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you. Well done. Uh, we'll now hand it over to the judges and we'll start off with Lisa. Steve, great presentation. You, <laughs> way you. to go. I, I, you brought it all to life, I hear you. Um, you did a great job. Um, I learned a lot. And one of the things I was just so impressed with is the journey you've been on with all your marketing. So I work at Destination Ontario and 
that's what we do. We're all about marketing. So how did it go with building a website? And it sounds like you want to get a digital asset collection going, which is amazing because that's what you're going to need, right? You got to promote things through social, get the word out. So how did it go? And, um, you know, how was that journey that you're on and working with ITO who are great at helping support you? So I was just curious how that's all going. Well, my father has been doing most of it with Kira Cole from the Economic Development Department okay. in Podwell First Nation. Okay. Um, I'm slowly learning for all this computer and yeah. everything else like that. So it's kind of, it's a lot for me right now. Usually yeah. I'm just the hands-on kind of guy, but uh, I don't know. He, I guess my father is getting a little older, right? So he kind of wants me to learn everything here and it's a big learning curve for me. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is all, this is all nervous, you know? Totally. Well, good for you for putting yourself, you know, to learn and to, and to kind of embrace it. So well done. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Billy. Hey, Steve. Um, yeah. So, so uh, essentially you guys are not starting from scratch though, right? You already have the fishing tours and businesses lined up. Um, so my question would be um, in, in terms of um, differentiating with it, do you see like the hunting packages and the fishing tours all operate, all operating out of the same business year round? And, and the idea is that uh, like people can come back and be return guests for each of the different tours. Yes, for sure. Uh, depending on the visitors, we can offer uh, anything of the from hunting to fishing, possibly to ice fishing. Um, you know, depending if we have the right ice and everything else like that, right? Um, there's a lot of other avenues that we've been looking at getting into, and uh, we're we're very excited to get going here, right? On you know, with COVID and everything else like that, it's put a big damper on things. But you know, we haven't we haven't stopped trying to look for other avenues to uh, hone in on. Amazing. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, Billy. Carol. Justin, um, great presentation, Steve. Um, you spoke about in your presentation that. Um, that you are very close to uh, Point Peeling National Park. And so how do you see um, partnering with them or working in collaboration with the guests that would be going there as well? Yes, um, thank you again. Um, I used to be a call, actually a Point Peeling National Park employee. So I know a lot of everything that goes on in there. Um, my father used to work there, right? So. Um, with the birders and everything else like that, we also uh, we also allow like tours to go on on our boats too, right? So if somebody wanted to go out and uh, do bird watching on the lake or in a marsh or anything like that, we have that option to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're open to ideas, um, everything, right? Like any if, to a boat ride, to going out looking for birds, to go and catch fish, to duck hunting. Um, you know, we have a camp over on another area too that's uh, a little cottage that, you know, get away from that we could provide services there as well. Like Point Pelee is definitely a huge attraction and, you know, we, we have worked with them before. Okay. So very excited with that too. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. Carolyn. Okay, honey, Carolyn King, I'm one of the Mississaugas of the Credit, and I um, I did work with the Caldwell First Nation there uh, several years back. So it was a great, you know, before the reserve got recognized and stuff like that. So I have some history with the community. Nice. Great group of people. I was just like, some of our meetings were the best. Oh my goodness. Well, one day they threw good. gum at me and they got gum in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, all about the water, your, your uh, tour group there, uh, lots of good opportunity there and um, streamlining at the FET. Uh, I think you know your business. I heard you say um, if, the, if the ice is right. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're looking into ice fishing, you know, as long as everything goes as planned, we'll, uh, we'll be looking at that avenue. We're, de we're definitely looking at that avenue. Yeah. So as you, you mentioned that about doing the online booking, is that working out? Uh, well, or are you, just, are you going to start? 
yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be starting uh, real shortly here. It's in the process, uh, just getting the final touches on it right now, and uh, we're gonna be doing that. We're we've been pretty busy uh, with social media and everything else like that so far, but I think this is gonna bring the bring it to the next step. Great, great. Okay, well, that's great. Um, uh, you know, everybody likes to get out on the water and safely and with knowledgeable oh, people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If I could live on the water, I would. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. And uh, our final judge question, Kida. Great presentation, Steve. Thank you. I can imagine. I, I can't wait. If there's an opportunity to go learn hunt and fish in other people's territory and a tourism type opportunity, I'll be signing up and coming out, even in cold weather, which I don't really like. The ice ice fishing sounds exciting. <laughs> oh, ice fishing, everything, right? I, I fish right into January. If there's no ice, I'm on my boat. I keep my house at 30 degrees. <laughs> I'm at 63 right now, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I might be my end. So you mentioned this, like, this is new. You're taking on this. This is great. Your dad um, helping you out with this. I guess that would be my main question. And I always ask people in succession planning because you think about how you want to grow. You always have to think about your business will grow. You have a good product. People are going, you have a good opportunity, a good experience. People are going to love it. Word's going to spread. You're going to have repeat business for sure. So my question, I guess, would be is, does your dad actually have a timeline when he wants to be golfing, fishing, hunting, no longer helping <laughs> with the business itself? Because that's a question to ask your dad realistically of, you know, dad, you know, what's kind of your timeline for me to be, be running with this and to have a timeline for that? And as well as, um, and this is probably totally irrelevant, but it is in other businesses. How do you plan for your vacation time and your time away from the business? But in your case, I would quite imagine you actually get to do that. You're getting paid. You have ideally the dream job that everybody <laughs> is aspiring for. Guess what, Steve? You found it. Um, so I guess the main question would be to your dad and, and kind of like, do you have planning around that or assistance? Um, if your dad what does want to retire a step back earlier. Well, my dad's getting older, obviously, right? Everybody's getting older. So am I. Uh, so are you, right? Uh, so eventually, you know, yeah, he's not going to be able to do it any longer, right? But at the same time, uh, both of us have the basically the vacation dream, right? Like we, we hunt, we fish, we, you know, we teach everybody. We, we've been running our guide service business already, I think, for six or seven years now. So it's every single season, you know, when it comes to spring, summer, fall, winter, we're doing something all the time. And, you know, as long as he's able to do it, I, I don't think that, I don't think he's going to stop. And neither am I, you know, like we, I, I just recently, we just recently purchased another uh, charter boat. So, and both of us are licensed captains, right? Like not going to have anybody else from the business, but us, but uh, vacation time. I mean, I, I take vacation time from work to go do this you know what i mean i don't i don't go on trips i don't go on anything else but hunting. that's what i do and that's you know that's what we want from everybody too we want to take everybody out and experience what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis thank you i'm jealous thank anytime, you so much for sharing any, anytime any one of you guys want to go we'll, we'll go catch fish hunt whatever <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, th thank you so much, Steve. Great job. Round of applause for Steve. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate it. Thank you, judges. All right. Well, at this point, um, uh, you can actually uh, stay if you like, Steve. There'll be a tourism talk uh, starting shortly um, uh, by the ITO team. But uh, for judges, um, challenging task ahead. We had uh, great uh, five great pitches. And so now what we'll do is we will uh, move over to the Google Meet room. So we'll uh, take a few minutes um, just so you have a moment uh, to take a break. But for the judges, myself and Jasmine will see you over there. And I'll just uh, share with uh, those who are watching that uh, the judges, again, have a very difficult uh, um, uh, task ahead of them to select three winners who will each receive the $5,000 uh, grant, mentorship, ITO, and other partner support. Uh, the judges will select those three by consensus and we'll be uh, sharing uh, any conflict of interest to, to make sure that the uh, judging process is transparent. So, um, so judges, we'll see you in a few minutes in the Google Meet room. Uh, so please do leave uh, this Zoom meeting entirely and we'll see you there. 
Uh, and at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Carrie Ann Shakes, digital strategy intern from ITO, to introduce the tourism talk chat. And thanks to uh, all those who have been watching. Uh, we'll be back with the winner's announcement at 6.15. So at this point, over to you, Carrie Ann. Thank you. Uh, hi. Yeah. My name is Carrie Ann. I'm uh, zooming in from the territory and treaty land of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat people. Um, as a treaty person, I accept my responsibility to honor all our relations. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I recently joined the ITO team as a digital strategy intern, and I'm currently a creative industry student going into my fourth year of studies. Um, outside of school, I really enjoy cooking and learning about food sovereignty. And growing up, my mom was very passionate about um, food sovereignty and sustainability. And she's been running the Duff and Grove Farmers Market for over 15 years now. So that's how I guess that interest sparked a bit. Um, but yeah, I, this really informed my knowledge of food and sustainability and its ties to culture. So when I joined ITO, I was really excited um, considering how integral food is to the indigenous tourism sector. But enough about me, I guess. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I look forward to our discussion today and learning how I can continue to support Indigenous tourism operators across Ontario. Um, for those of you just joining now, in May of this year, ITO and the Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab invited Indigenous tourism entrepreneurs, businesses, community groups, and nonprofits uh, to bring forward new tourism ideas and experiences um, for our friendly Indigenous tourism day on Dragon's Den Day program. Um, we just heard five amazing pitches from our finalists and the judges are deliberating as we speak to select three winners who will receive a $5,000 non-repayable financial contribution and a three month men mentorship to get their new ideas off the ground. Um, yeah, while we wait for the judges to deliberate, I'll be welcoming a panel of speakers for our tourism talk, which will be followed by the announcement of the three Shkode program winners at 6.15. Um, thank you to Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival for having us. This is the Shkode Program Tourism Talk, and we're gonna just dive right in because I'm so excited to start this conversation and introduce you to our incredible panelists. Um, since we're talking uh, innovation and Indigenous tourism today, it's only fitting to welcome Kevin Eshkogigan and Lenny Brown to the stage. Um, Kevin, would you like to start and just introduce yourself a bit? Yeah, thanks, Carrie ann So I, I introduced myself earlier, I've been watching all of the pitches this is fantastic uh, so i'm not going to regurgitate everything that i had which i, I think most people on the call uh, know uh, know that i'm involved with ito and i've been here for quite some time um, and helping the communal good with tourism and uh, i'll pass it over to lenny to to start off and we can jump into the questions after that if that's okay hi everyone oh okay uh <laughs> My name is Lenny Brem. Um, I'm zooming in from Toronto, where I live, which, as Carrie Ann said, is the uh, territory and treaty land of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of uh, the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat people. Uh, and additionally, this land was uh, part of the Toronto Purchase of 1805 and also referred to as Treaty 13. Before I worked with ITO, I worked in hospitality and events, uh, agri food and food sales, and consulting. And right now I am ITO's Director of Operations. I've been working with the organization for about 15 months. Thank you. Um, I guess to start off, we'll just introduce ITO and maybe sort of provide um, some definitions around what Indigenous tourism is. So I guess for whoever would like to start, what is Indigenous tourism in your own words? Yeah, well, I'll take that one. and. Um... Yeah, Indigenous tourism, I just actually got asked this question yesterday when I was speaking to a class from uh, uh, the Sarnia area, and um, they asked, what, what is Indigenous tourism? And, and simply put, in um, my definition of it, it's, it Indigenous tourism is everything. It, it's so many things. It, it's not just, um, you know, we, we're classified as a sector, but really it's more about a, a demographic group. Um, and at the end of the day, really, it, it's hard to define because we're in all facets of tourism and as the original tour guides to these all of these lands uh, indigenous people have been doing tourism for a long long time and what it really boils down to for to for me is uh, it, it's about telling our story in our terms and it's about our cultures and sharing our cultures with others and sh sharing all that Canada is 
for everyone that's there. So to give it one very, very specific definition, it's very challenging to do because it is the foods, it is the, uh, the transportation models. It's you know moving around the lakes and the water and, and the land. It's about all of those things, accommodations, you know, food and beverage, all, every element of the tourism industry is incorporated in the indigenous tourism facet. So it's, it's tough to give a very specific definition we're basically everything at the same time we're very specific so uh, i'll leave it at that lenny if you want to add some to that that'd be great i don't think i need to add anything to that i think you cover, covered it covered it really well <laughs> yeah thank you so much that was very uh i guess helpful um i guess more specifically um looking at ito I guess, what would you say ITO is and how does it contribute to the growth of Indigenous tourism in Ontario and maybe more broadly, Canada? Uh, that's for, and a question yeah. for anyone, <laughs> sorry. You waiting for me, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let you do that. Lenny's only been with us for about a year, just over a year, but uh, she's been in almost every meeting. So I'm gonna let her uh, <laughs> handle some of these calls, these questions. That is true. Um, so ITO is the, the uh, one and only recognized voice for Indigenous tourism in Ontario. Um, we are membership based, so our members uh, are um, Indigenous tourism operators uh, across the province. So operators that are First Nations, Métis or Inuit, um, and they, you know, sort of cover all parts of the tourism sector from accommodations to for food service, uh, festivals and events and everything in between. Um, ITO, uh, you know, our mission is to improve the socioeconomic conditions of Indigenous people through tourism. And like Kevin said, we do that by um, sort of providing a platform to uh, allow Indigenous people to tell their story on their terms. Um, and we focus on four different sort of areas or pillars in order to do that, to support the industry. Um, and those are marketing and branding, product development, uh, like human resources or training development. Um, as well as cultural authenticity. So our work is um, quite varied. We do a lot of things to support the industry. And of course, um, having just joined before the pandemic, a lot of what I have participated in as part of ITO in the last year has been really focused on the specific supports that the industry needed that were brought on by you know the, the situation of the last year. Um, but I know that the potential of the organization based on what we can do and mandate um, is a lot broader than I think what we've, what we've done so far, which is also to say quite, quite a lot. Did I cover it, Kevin? Uh, I think you did a great job, but you know, I could speak for days on this stuff. Okay. So I'm, I'll leave it at that because I know we got more questions that Carrie Ann wants to ask us. Carrie Ann might be a little bit frozen. Yeah, so just to add then to a little bit to, um, to what you said, it, it, it simply put, ITO is about uh, creating the vehicles, Thank the you. vehicles uh, to grow the industry uh, as a whole. And uh, one of the cliches we have in the tourism industry within our larger tourism family is the rising tides raise all boats. And um, for a long, long time, we really didn't have a boat here in Ontario as a voice for Indigenous tourism. Uh, we used to have two really fantastic organizations, Knott's and Atasso. And uh, well, they were, you know, designated for the north and the south to help grow indigenous tourism in this province. Um, but they, you know, they, they unfortunately left us in the late 2000s, and ITO was spawned out of that. And I'll just say this: uh, I can totally appreciate why we had two uh, back in the 2000s when I was first starting my career in tourism, uh, because it's a massive job to try and service Ontario, and you need a huge team. And although we've got a small team and limited resources, we're doing the best that we can. And I'd like to think that we're, we're overperforming um, as usual, it seems, but uh, you know, it, it's a, a great place to, to be and it's a lot of fun right now. Yeah, thank you both. Sorry, I think I uh, froze there, but I really appreciate both of your answers. I guess um, moving forward, this is a bit of a wordy question, but um, you know, we know that the indigenous tourism sector in Ontario was home to the largest indigenous tourism industry um, in Canada, contributing over $600 million to the GDP, over 12,000 jobs and over 500 Indigenous tourism businesses prior to the pandemic. Um, so beyond these huge numbers, what would you say is the importance of Indigenous tourism? 
Yeah, well, I'll take that one to start, Lenny. Um, yeah, and those are all pre-pandemic numbers. We're actually doing an economic impact uh, study right now that's uh, going to help us shape our plans for the future. We do have a five-year strategy that's taking the pandemic into consideration. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, what you know we're, we're trying to do here is help grow the industry. And Lenny talked a bit about it earlier is you know, improving the socioeconomic conditions of Indigenous people through tourism, um, creating vehicles that they can tell their story um, on their terms on, and, uh, you know, really getting involved. And, and there's a lot of things that that incorporates, including, you know, uh, helping grow and, and support, you know, uh, retaining a lot of our culture within the experiences that we have. We just heard, you know, five pitches where the culture was definitely incorporated into what they do. And we want to support that. We don't tell anybody what their story is. We just simply amplify it and give them, you know, new venues to share that information. And that's something that, uh, you know, we haven't really fully, uh, you know, embraced here in Ontario for quite some time. We have our really strong partners uh, that have been doing some really great work. And sometimes it seems like they're the only ones there doing that work. But there's, there's a lot of businesses in Ontario. There's a lot of Indigenous people in Ontario. And we're here to help support uh, them take their, their rightful place in the tourism industry and then in the economy. I think um, to add to that, because I, I, I think, I mean, there's so many reasons why it's important. And then I look at it too from both sides. And I think, Kevin, you really talked about the benefit of um, participation from uh, like an operator perspective. And uh, for someone who's, you know, um, an entrepreneur to, to be able to, um, take their culture or their lifestyle, like I'm thinking, you know, uh, fishing boat operators, tour guides and things like that, to be able to turn that into a livelihood uh, and be an entrepreneur as, as challenging as it is, but to, you know, for some people being your own boss and getting to, you know, go out on the water, or out, out on the land every day is kind of like a dream come true. So there's a benefit from, from, uh, from that side and the economic benefits that come with that. And then on, on a consumer side or from an outsider perspective, um, you know, tourism is such a um, powerful vehicle for learning or it can be. And um, in this case, when we talk about, I guess, indigenous cultural tourism, there's an opportunity to learn about First Nations, Métis and Inuit people um, and their cultures um, and their history, um, and which is all, all of our history really, um, but just by visiting them. And even if I think that tourism experience isn't necessarily culturally focused it's not necessarily having to be really specific about um sharing uh information in sort of like an educational way i think simply by interacting with different people in different settings that's that's cultural learning that's cultural sharing and learning that's happening right there and i think um you know that's another really important aspect of, of what indigenous tourism brings to the world yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess uh, in terms of wanting to amplify voices and not speak for people and, and giving Indigenous tourism operators new venues to share their cultures, how do you see new technologies contributing to the recovery and growth of Indigenous, indigenous tourism um, and also, I guess, in their ability to help share that culture and, and do that sort of stuff? Carrie Ann, I'll, I'll start with this one, but I'm just going to precurse this with... Uh, the reality that every day I struggle with technology, but our one of our core um, philosophies with our new five-year strategy is to embrace technology. So I'm doing my best, I'm trying. Um, I get excited when we have our discussions around augmented reality and virtual reality and uh, the gamification of some of those activities. It's, it's a lot of fun, uh, but I know Lenny's got this, this field down almost perfectly if not perfectly, and she knows exactly where we're going with this. But I just want to talk about uh, the virtual reality components. Really, really happy to say that we've created a virtual reality model that allows and, and generates, um, it gener first of all, it, it generates new revenue streams for Indigenous tourism operators, for those who are participating within that framework. And uh, really proud to say that because of our not-for-profit status and how we've structured it, um, depending on uh, the, the number of participants, they will receive, the, the operator that is, will receive 50 to 60% of the revenues from those experiences. And that's a completely new, new revenue stream for Indigenous operators that they never had before. And it's much less work for them. And one of the things that we see is Indigenous operators are working themselves to the bone. We heard one operator just talk about 
you know, running his business uh, and taking time off of work to do that. So what we're trying to do is help support those operators, not just during uh, global pandemic times, but also into the future so that they can also embrace technology. And we've created vehicles that will allow them to, you know, help their business prosper, but also allow them to share their story and have a better quality of life. And that's what we did with the virtual reality model. And it's, it's an evolving uh, tool and revenue stream for the businesses. But we started, we, we sold our first a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're doing another big one for uh, a large event in July. And the, the nice part of it is they get uh, speakers fees, but it's not just that they get royalties on each of their videos that they replay over and over and over again based on the number of participants, they get that revenue for us, all those people and those eyeballs watching that video. So it's, it's a great new way, but I'm going to pass it over to, to Lenny on and speak about augmented reality because that's really exciting. And I'll go on for an hour on that. But uh, Lenny, take, take that away, please. It's really hard not to go on uh, for an hour about that because uh, it's such a big world of possibilities. And even just to talk about um, the project that we're specifically working on, it, it's also like a really big project that's got a really big vision. And, and of course, there's a lot of components to it. So I'll try to I'll try to pare it down. But, um, you know, ITO is, has partnered um, with a technology partner, you know, who has this area of expertise. And together, we've dreamed up and are, are in the process of building um, a, essentially a tourism app for Indigenous tourism in Ontario. Um, and the app, of course, we hope will be on everyone's smartphone and will be in hand. Uh, and you can do a whole bunch of different things with it. So uh, it will be map based. It's going to, of course, um, show users of the app around Ontario um, things like what uh, tourism businesses are there. So, of course, we'll, we'll, if you think of something like Google Maps that has all these points of interest on the map and you can touch them and you know, see their phone number and operating hours and visit their website and look at their menu and pictures. It's the same sort of concept. So plotted on this map will be a whole bunch of Indigenous tourism experiences that consumers can book trips with or simply find out more about them just by, you know, surfing on their phone from the comfort of your couch. Um, we also want to bring a cultural and educational component to it. It's, it's not just a tool to, to book a trip, but um, it's also going to show you where the First Nation reserves are in Ontario. There's, you know, 133 of them, and I think many people don't know where they are, even if they pass through them on the way to cottage country or as they're traveling around the province. So we want to bring that educational content into the app as well. Um, there'll be an overlay of the map to show where various uh, treaty territories um, are, where, you know, what areas the treaties cover. And of course, that's something that when you see it on the map, you can click and learn more about, learn more about that and, you know, uh, follow, follow the links to read more, to see, um, you know, who the treaty is with and learn more about, about those people. Um, and then of course, this, the extra special component of it all is that we will be activating augmented reality experiences in places across the province. And so um, motivation to get up from the couch and go to these places and experience them. Uh, so for the first phase, we've identified sort of a good diversity of different types of um, experiences to activate. Um, there'll be some in Northern Ontario and some in Southern Ontario, and they will activate things like um, historical sites, uh, cultural sites, um, community, like First Nations communities, as well as some of our tourism businesses. And these will be opportunities for, um, you know, whether you've traveled there specifically to have this AR experience or whether you happen to be there and, you know, see some signage that lets you know that if you download this app, you can see this experience. We can bring stories to life that will, um, teach people about either the history or, you know, something about culture. And it, again, is just a vehicle where you're, um, we're providing the, the technology and this, this platform for um, not just tourism operators in this case, but Indigenous people across the province to tell their story on their terms, but like in a really um, innovative technology supported way. And just, you know, Kevin alluded to it, um, once we've been able to populate this app with all sorts of great content, um, you know, it takes a little bit of time to build, but we can add a layer of gamification to it 
where, you know, you can get rewards for going across, you know, visiting multiple locations across the province for, for instance, as an example, uh, visiting, you know, um, all of Six Nation tourism's various um, tourism uh, spots within uh, that, that area, and they have quite a few. So um, beyond being able to educate people through the app, it really will get people up and moving around. Um, and we, you know, beyond this phase one, we think it will really continue to grow long before or long past, um, you know, maybe Kevin, his involvement or my involvement, and it will just, it will end up being, you know, a big platform for uh, partners and businesses to plug into over the long term. And it, it's a v very exciting um, project and we have amazing partners on it. Um, and I think it, it speaks to, you know, I think going back to your question about what role technology has to play, I think it's a lot about access, right? Like as a consumer through, through the pandemic where, you know, everything changed, technology and, you know, the digital world gave consumers um, access to products and experiences that maybe they didn't have before. You know, you can take a museum tour, you can tour the Louvre without actually having to fly to Paris. And then from the opposite side, it gives um, businesses of all kinds access to markets that they didn't have access to. And it opens a lot of doors and additional revenue streams. And so, you know, I think we're not sure where technology is going to fall if we're all sick of looking at screens after we're allowed out and about again, which is, I think, just around the corner. Um, but certainly providing this additional access um, is going to be an important uh, role for technology to continue to play long after. Um, and sorry, I think one other thing, too, is that's, you know, being there's been a lot of talk about it. But how does technology um, help us with issues like sustainability? Um, Kevin was talking about how these technological vehicles can help operators by um, saving their time. They can have a recorded guided tour so that they can spend more hours with their family and less time working and still, you know, have a product that generates revenue um, as well as, you know, uh, people can experience things without having to travel and leave that big um, carbon footprint. And so I think you'll really see technology um, playing playing a big role in Indigenous tourism because we are interested in um, solving these problems and doing things better and differently as we move forward. And so I'm excited to see all the solutions-based um, innovations that come out of it. And I think we're already leading with, with some of the ones we're working on. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, Ariana, can I just add something, please? Oh. Yeah, I just wanted to say a great job as usual, Lenny. Um, uh, I wanted to add this. All of this um, is being done, of course, very respectfully. We're just creating the vehicles. We're not uh, dictating what the stories are. We help shape the stories and how they're told. But the stories come from the Indigenous people. It's their story to tell. And what we're doing is simply bringing it to life. So it, it may be an artist that did a, an amazing mural somewhere uh, and he wants to, to tell that story in a 3D format will help do that with this technology. And, and the beautiful part of all this is it's very accessible uh, on many fronts. Lenny mentioned a few of them, but it's accessible in the way that we can, um, you know, all people are gonna need to experience some of these elevated activations is their smartphone. And uh, it's very easy and simple to do. Uh, there's all kinds of ideas we're kicking around like push notifications when you're entering treaty territories, um, you know, giving a podcast as things evolve. Uh, like we said, Lenny said, we're, we're, the content that's going to be included in this, uh, I don't think it's ever going to end. Yeah, there's so much stories to tell from the Indigenous perspective. Um, and it's all going to be done very respectfully. And when we talk about historic and cultural sites, we're only going to share what the Indigenous community wants to share. It's not what we want to share as ITO, as a corporate entity. Uh, we're more about community. And we want to make sure that you know, the stories that are, are being shared are the ones that the community wants to share. We're not going to be promoting sacred sites. We're not going to be promoting burial grounds. Uh, we're going to educate people on the terms uh, uh, that the communities want to share and the people want to share. It's their story on their terms. And I'm in no place and no position. And neither is ITO or anybody else, for that matter, able to speak for anybody else and, and force the story to be told. 
Thank you. Um, thank you both. I feel like it's very forward thinking with technology, both of your answers. And I think that's really important. And also, I guess on the note of accessibility, I, I guess I'm wondering what sort of capacity building you feel is necessary to ensure that all indigenous tourism operators are you know, equipped to deal with new technologies, um, with the new technologies sort of that you mentioned that are being introduced to the sector. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at this one. And it's it's going to be challenging for sure for some, but we're here to provide the support. So we're, that's what we do at O2. We're, we're helpers. So we want to help the operators. We want to help the communities. Uh, we want to help any of the DMOs, anybody out there. So the destination marketing organizations uh, or anybody that wants to help uh, you know, advance this agenda will be here to help support it. And uh, we know uh, like there's parts of Ontario, uh, I'm in one of them, where connectivity is an issue. And what we're trying to do with this is make sure that this is, these activities, you know, and embracing technology isn't reliant on, you know, being connected because there's communities up in the far north that don't have the connectivity that we have. So, you know, we, we need to make sure that these experiences and these activations are accessible without being directly connected all the time. So making it available for download, having it on your phone, um, having it on your computer, whatever it may be, so that people can experience these in other ways as well, while still using technology. Awesome, thank you. Um, Lenny, are you okay or are you good with that answer, I guess? Yeah, no, I think that's that's the main, like one of the main challenges is, is definitely the, you know, access to internet. And I think there's, you know, a learning curve too with um, being able to uh, do business in new ways. And uh, people obviously across the board have different um, comfort levels and even um, like inclination to try to learn new technologies. And so I think one of the things that um, ITO is doing and, and would be well served to continue to do is to, um, you know, provide those vehicles, like I said, and, and be providing the support so that um, not everyone has to like go out on their own and learn how to create their own, you know, um, digital, you know, their own website or their own um, digital marketplace. Um, I've, we've really seen um, different players and partners in the industry come together over the last year to try to, you know, um, help people by coming together and say, you know, we're going to create a platform and we invite a whole bunch of different people to join in and we're going to help you so that you don't have to go out there and learn how to make a website all by yourself. And as you get into things like AR and virtual reality, those are, you know, that's not accessible maybe to your standard small business owner. And so I think that's a great role for us to play in, you know, not bringing it to the masses, but to make that accessible to our membership base and to provide a supporting role in helping them uh, utilize and access the technologies in whatever way is suitable for them and in whatever way they want to get involved in it um, and to provide some options uh, for small business owners along that line. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Um, that's really, it's really nice to hear like how ITO is just sort of invested in helping indigenous tourism operators. And I guess for those that are watching and wondering how would one get involved with the Indigenous tourism industry or support um, these new innovations and the industry as a whole? Lenny, I'll let you start with that one and okay. I'll, I'll chime in afterwards. Yeah, well, one of the things I love about, uh, you know, working with ITO is that we're so inclusive um, and there's so, because there's so many different answers to that question really. And it sort of depends on who you are and how you want to be involved. So you know, from a consumer perspective, um, for sure you want to, you know, I mean, simple things, you can follow ITO on social media so that you see us, you know, spotlighting and featuring our members, um, as well as, you know, uh, staying informed about these bigger projects that we're doing. And uh, of course, when they roll out and we launch them so that you can, um, you know, download the app or visit the website um, and just stay involved in, in that sense. Uh, we have um, a consumer facing website, indigenousexperienceontario.ca, and that's where consumers can go and see what um, indigenous experiences are available in the province that you can, you know, go and, and visit, book a tour, stay overnight, and all of those things. 
from a business perspective, the first step is just to go to our website and become a member. Um, there's no fee for that right now. And again, it's the best way to uh, get to know us and we can get to know you. And then we can look at all of the great initiatives that we have going on and find out um, you know, where you can plug in or get involved. Um, and of course, just stay in touch as you know, we have new things coming out all the time. Um, Kevin, I'll hand it over to you because I know there's there's probably more to that. From yeah, no, perspective. yeah, no, you did definitely did a great job. And um, th there's a lot of ways to get involved. And again, you, you nailed it when you said, you know, it depends on who you are and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, like, you know, from the consumer, you, you know, the social media channels and getting involved with IEO, Indigenous Experiences Ontario, to find out where those businesses are next to you. Yeah, and supporting them, it, it's simply enough. One of the things that I speak a lot about uh, when I speak do corporate speaking engagements is, you know, simply enough, be a good neighbor. So if you want to be involved, ask us what we're up to, uh, celebrate with us, you know, be there when the times are tough as well and stand alongside us uh, and, and let's figure some things out together so that uh, we can all enjoy this, this beautiful country. Uh, but one of the things, like I'll just give some examples. We signed a, a uh, MOU last week with uh, Tourism Thunder Bay. And, uh, you know, there's some great work there and on that type of level. One of the things we try to do is make sure it's mutually beneficial. So if you want to get involved and you want to be a supporter, know that on this side of the table, we're looking to do it in a mutually beneficial way. We're not just takers, we're, we're givers as well, we're helpers, and we want to help everybody. We want to bridge the gap where, the, where there is, and we do that with many groups across Ontario. And uh, now we're starting to do this work because of our philosophies. We're getting asked to do this work, um, you know, into the U.S. and across the Americas. So, you know, and it starts with really a really simple philosophy that I think we all know about is, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated and treat them with respect. And if, you know, people want to support ITO and the Indigenous tourism operators, you know, one way is simply just go out and support an operator and, and talk to an Indigenous person. I always, well, pre-pandemic when I was doing in-person speaking engagements, you know, I, I put it out to the audience. Some of these crowds are, you know, a thousand or a couple of thousand. And I'd say, if you don't know an Indigenous person, you do now because you've met me. So if you want to know more, ask me i may know somebody because uh, there's a lot of people out there but it's still a small community at the end of the day and we need to collectively just simply enough support each other whether you're indigenous or not and uh you know if you want to do good things we're at the mindset let's do good things together and, and to us it's really that simple great thank you so much um lenny and kevin uh, for your time and for joining me today for this exciting discussion. Um, are there any final remarks that are either of you guys want to close off with? Um, I guess just to build on what we were just saying, I mean, for anyone who's watching this, um, you know, I think return to travel is around the corner and um, I think we've all uh, heard it before, but explore your own backyard. Um, go to the website, see what Indigenous operators are out there and what they're offering and um, when you're planning your next trip, for sure, make sure to consider um, what we have here in Ontario, because there's some amazing things. And um, even for someone who's, you know, used to traveling, uh, you know, either south of the border or internationally, um, I think everyone will be really impressed to see what we have here in our own backyard. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll add a few final remarks, Carrie Ann, if that's okay. I know we've got a few minutes here till the judges come back. I'm excited to hear who the winners are, um, but I'll, I'll say this. There, there's nobody better to be in this industry than Indigenous people. We've been doing Indigenous tourism for over 500 years. Uh, we're just not as skilled at the current model. And I say that, I say this as well. We're just not as skilled at it uh, yet. Some of us are, some of us are great, but uh, we're going to do an amazing job at doing tourism collectively. And like I said, there's nobody better. Uh, we've been doing it for a long, long time. And there's no one who knows these lands better than Indigenous people. Uh, these are our homelands. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We have nowhere to go. This is our home. And uh, we welcome everybody with open arms. And we want to share with others. That's how we are. And, you know, we want to share in this in a mutually beneficial way so all of us can benefit and all of us can enjoy this together and live just simply a good life here and enjoy our time 
sharing and learning from each other on, with all cultures. You, you'll see with our team, we're a very diverse group and I'm very proud of that. We've got people who work from, with us from around the world, from South America to the Middle East, all over the place. So it's fantastic. And that's really what it's all about is sharing with each other, learning with, from each other and helping each other. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of the ITO team and, and all of you collectively. I'll leave it at that, carry on, miigwech. Thank you. Thank you so much for ending on such a positive note. Um, and thank you listeners for joining us as well. It has been a pleasure and I hope you enjoyed our brief uh, discussion about Indigenous tourism in Ontario. Um, to stay up to date on all things ITO, please check out our website, www.indigenoustourismontario.ca and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Indigenous Tourism Ontario. Um, I'll now welcome Brian, uh, still marketing specialist from ITO to announce the winners. Ani Bojo, I am Brian Still, and I come from the land of the Anishinaabeg territory of Wawashkenega. I am the marketing specialist at Indigenous Tourism Ontario, and I'd like to welcome everybody back to the um, Skode pitch sessions. Our judges have now completed their deliberations and have designated a representative to announce the three winners, who will each receive a $5,000 mentorship plus additional ITO support. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Lavecchie to give that big announcement. Lisa will be joining us at 615. We can hustle through that one. Yes, I'm going to pass you over to Justin LaFontaine here from Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab. Oh, Lisa's joined us. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brian. We're just waiting, I think, for the judges to rejoin along with the um, finalists. So everybody can uh, stay tuned. We'll be having the winner's announcement at 6.15. Uh, maybe a graphic for um, the next uh, minute or so.
Ani Bojo. I am Brian Still, and I come from the land of the Anishinaabek territory of Wawashkinaga. I am the marketing specialist here at ITO, and I'd like to welcome everybody back to the Shkode program pitch sessions. Our judges have now completed their deliberations and have designated a representative to announce the three winners, who will each receive $5,000 mentorship plus additional ITO support. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Levecchia to give that big announcement. Thanks very much, Brian. I appreciate that. First of all, thank you to Justin from the Tourism Innovation Lab and to all of you at ITO, Kevin, Brian, and Jasmine, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today and to be part of such an exciting program. It's been awesome. I can definitely tell you that in the judges room, it was exciting and it was great deliberation. And we feel really excited to talk to you about everything today and the winners. Um, but first, before I say that, all five finalists today will be definitely receiving support. So please know that you're all walking away with the support and uh, good guidance of everybody here. So we're happy with that. So without further ado, and in no particular order, here we go. Today's winners are, first off, in no particular order, but I, my list, Thrive Tours with Amanda Cora and Brad Robinson. Congratulations. All right. Yay, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. She me uh, yet. Yeah, congrats. Um, I hope I'm showing that enthusiasm yes, the way you, you did. Okay, good. Absolutely. Um, and then next up is Steve Simpson Jr. from Simper Fishing Charters and Guided Hunt Tours. And the thank next, you thank you, Steve. And next up is Mino, Mino Gish Gunt. Hi, Mino, how are you? And Mino, his company is Noel Nunsu Sung Boat Tours. Congratulations. Oh, make that. It has been an honor here today. I've learned a lot, so I, I really appreciate it. And it's been great meeting all the judges on the judging panel and working with all of you. So it's been a real honor. So thank you very much. It's been nice meeting you all. And I'm just really proud to have had this opportunity to uh, be able to announce the winners today from Destination, on, from Destination Ontario. So lovely to meet you all. Thank you. Miigwech to all of our finalists and congratulations to our three Skoday winners. We look forward to working with them and to help them move their Indigenous tourism ideas forward. Thanks to our judges and partners for working with us to spark and support Indigenous tourism in Ontario. And we hope that you would stay tuned for updates on their progress by following ITO and the Ontario, Ontario Tourism Innovation Lab on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Miigwech everybody and Bama P. Bama P. Miigwech. Mamapi, miigwech. Mamapi, miigwech.